This video demonstrates the recommended procedure for a high voltage isolation, an essential safety precaution when performing maintenance on any high voltage system. Typical examples of this work includes the replacement of slip ring units, umbilical retermination, any wiring changes required in a junction box containing high voltage. The procedure includes proper inspection and proving of the high voltage test equipment which must be undertaken immediately before and after each use. The isolation process involves locking off the power distribution systems, proving the system dead at the supply and the surface unit, proving the system dead at the point of work, the attachment of additional earths and the completion of appropriate documentation such as permit to work forms and isolation control certificates. A permit to work is a document that controls maintenance work and helps to ensure that all safety procedures have been followed before work commences. The permit is issued by the issuing authority, typically the chief engineer on the vessel or installation. The permit must then be completed by the person in charge of the work, typically the ROV or equipment supervisor, and the responsible person, sometimes referred to as the competent person. The isolation control certificate is used when any isolation is going to take place on a system using high voltage. The isolation control certificate is an additional precaution that requires information regarding lock-off points, key numbers, fuses removed, and warning labels to be recorded. The details of these documents are discussed further in your course notes and your company or worksite procedures. Before we carry out the isolation, we must assemble the personal protective equipment, including safety gloves or gauntlets, which must be inspected for damage or contamination, and the expiry date checked. Appropriately rated safety glasses and steel toe cap rig boots with insulated soles. The toe caps should be inspected to check that there is no exposed steel, which can be a sparking hazard and is prohibited offshore. We will now see the engineer switching off and isolating the power distribution unit by attaching padlocks to the main breaker. Warning labels recording the time, date, permit to work number, and a brief description of the nature of the work are attached to the lock-off point. Exact procedures vary, but a two-lock system with the worker applying a lock and the supervisor or person in charge of the work applying a lock is generally accepted as best practice. One set of keys will be retained by the person carrying out the work, and the other may be given to the person in charge. Some companies will store the keys in a dedicated key safe located in the control van. The key safe may have double locks requiring two separate keys to open the unit. We are now nearly ready to test the system for the absence of high voltage at the supply or surface unit and also at the point of work. Before we do this, the probes must be inspected for damage or contamination. The tips of the probes are inspected for any sign of damage that might have been caused by arcing. The cables and connections are also inspected for damage. Finally, the probes are cleaned to ensure that they are free from any deposits that may conduct electricity. The probes are now proved using a dedicated proving unit. The proving unit contains its own self-test function in the form of a light which glows when it is operated correctly. The light on the probe should also glow during this test to confirm satisfactory operation. Inspecting and testing the high voltage probe is an essential part of the isolation procedure. Any damage or errors must be reported and alternative equipment sourced. On no account must damaged or inoperable test equipment be used during a high voltage isolation. Once the probes have been deemed fit for use, the system can be tested for the absence of high voltage at the supply or surface unit. Wearing PPE 
He tests for any voltage between the phases on the terminal blocks, making sure that the probes are making good contact with each block. The engineer then tests between each phase and the earth point inside the junction box. Immediately after the test has been completed, the probes are rechecked using the proving unit. If this test fails, then it must be discarded and the system is not considered safe to work on. The earth leads, sometimes referred to as an earthing spider, must be inspected for damage prior to use. It is recommended that the connectors on the earth leads are of the type that can be secured to terminals to prevent them from working loose. The next step in this procedure is to attach additional earths to the step-up transformer at the supply or surface unit. This provides an added precaution of tying the high voltage system to earth whilst the maintenance is being carried out. Some systems may use an earthing spider for this, others may use an earthing or grounding breaker. The sequence in which the earth leads are connected is important. We begin by attaching a long earth lead to a common earth point. Each additional lead is connected in sequence to the transformer windings or to the connections in the junction box. It is important to be aware of stored energy in cables or cable capacitance and the hazards this poses. For this reason PPE must always be worn when discharging and attaching earths. It is generally recommended to use a discharge probe to remove any stored charge. Some systems instead use an insulated tool to apply the earth leads. The junction box or transformer is now left open with the leads securely attached. High voltage warning notices are posted at the point where any high voltage work takes place. Checks made so far have determined that no high voltage is present at the surface unit. Before maintenance can take place, the system must also be checked at the work site. In this instance, we will see the engineer using the high voltage probes to test the system at the ROV termination junction box. Once again, the high voltage test probes must be proved before we can confirm that the equipment is safe to work on. The engineer now tests between phases on the main power conductors. He also tests between phase and earth. If the light on the probe were to glow, it would indicate that there was a voltage present and the system would be unsafe to work on and the source of the charge must be investigated. Assuming no voltage is found, the HV probes will be proved once more, whilst warning signs will be placed at the worksite. It is also recommended to cordon off the worksite to restrict access only to essential personnel. Finally, the permit to work form is completed along with any isolation control certificates that may be in place. These documents are normally completed in triplicate, which allows copies to be posted at the worksite, the point of isolation, and the permit office of the vessel or installation. These isolation procedures are discussed in more detail in your course notes.